We are going to be demonstrating now uh, Mailer augmentation and safety techniques around how to perform this effectively and well. If we look at what we're trying to accomplish here today, uh, what we see is an area of uh, a Mailer mound. We have uh, volume loss that's taken place in the mid-face and in just this Mailer area here. She's kept the volume of nasal labial holder, the medial fat pads. Um, and so what we want to do is bring this area up. We want to come just up to the uh, nasal uh, jugal groove here, uh, or the beginnings of the tear trough. Uh, but we have to avoid any hyaluronic acid in this area because the superficial lymphatic system is already full. And if you put a hyaluronic acid into that space, it will absorb water and you will create, you know, iatrogenically create edema and for the malar mound in this area. With the oblique angle here, what we see is the, again, fullness up in the malar, superior malar area with a visible loss of volume, uh, which now takes and breaks this curve. We have fullness depression and fullness again. The goal is to just restore that more youthful curve of the upper cheek. Important landmarks when injecting the midface are the infraorbital artery, which is in the mid-pupillary line, and it resides about 8.6 millimeters below the infraorbital rim in women. And so palpating the infraorbital rim at the mid-pupillary line, we see that the infraorbital vessel is going to be approximately right there. It's also 1.7 centimeters from the nasal bone. And so if we put that at 1.7, and we look at the landmark from the nasal bone, that's where we're going to find our infraorbital artery. The other artery of significance is the angular artery. The angular artery comes up from the facial artery and it parallels the nasolabial fold. We talk about that being at about the super tip break and approximately 3.5 centimeters from the midline, which puts that approximately here. Now, not only do we need to understand where we'll find those, we also need to understand the depth. And so the angular artery runs above the deep maxillary space, excuse me, the deep piriform space and the premaxillary space. And so when we come in from this area, if we stay deep and on the bone, we will be safe uh, from the uh, damage to the angular artery. You can enter the premaxillary space by coming more superficial, but that is done only when it is appropriate and indicated, and we'll review that. Topical numbing was placed in the distribution of our injections, and small wheels were made with 1% lidocaine with epinephrine at our injection sites. We're going to be demonstrating cannula injections, and we may or may not use a direct needle technique. Of note, we are going to avoid the area of malar edema and will be contouring the cheek for achievement for, in order to achieve a curve that takes this high point and this high point and blends that cheek. When augmenting the cheek, which is thicker tissue, at, and we're coming at it from the periosteal level, we need a high G-prime product. Typically, I use Voluma in this area, but Perlane is also a very good sub, uh, product for this. I use a 25 gauge needle uh, and 25 gauge cannula for these injections. First, we introduce the needle to create the opening. and then our cannula is passed through that opening. We immediately go to the periosteal level. Okay. Okay. 
and we do a aspiration and a small placement of the bubble. There's all the money in there. All the while injecting, you're looking at the quality of the skin, the color of the skin, to see if there's blanching that takes place. Okay, so that's small. That's still uncomfortable. So, with this augmentation, we've introduced a small amount of product to help this area become more numb. You can infiltrate this area with a local anesthetic uh, with lidocaine. Some people advocate that for vasoconstriction. One of the things that I find is it blanches the skin, which takes away one of my indicators, early indicators, if I'm in an arterial vessel with this product. Okay. When we do this, we can also come up to the orbital rim and get an improvement in the tear trough. This is not the only technique that we use, but there's one of them. We're now going to come in from our lateral port into the cheek. And once again, we've used our 25 gauge needle. And so we will come in. Here, I find it beneficial to pinch and raise that skin, and you will feel a discreet pop into the space where you want that filler to go. Once that pop takes place, I always aspirate back. That is not a guarantee of a that you are not in a vessel, but it is very much a safe maneuver and helps us. gauge where our filler is being placed. You can see how this contour is now coming up and we can move towards our medial space. One of the things I also am doing is using my opposite finger to occlude the critical arteries that we can inject into in the event that we do have an intravascular injection. I'd like to start to, starting to now see this contour filling in and the curve coming back. There's a little subtle improvement in the uh, nasolabial fold and yet we still need to move medial in this area. So now we're going to come back and we're going to come into this area from the nasolabial incision. should be no resistance in the passage of the cannula, and you can see that she is now more comfortable, and injection is slow and purposeful, and small volumes are placed with each injection. Once again, we're seeing the curve now coming into the medial cheek. We're seeing some improvement in the tear trough area, even though I haven't come directly into the tear trough area through the eyelid itself. We still need a small volume here, and that is in the area of that infraorbital vessel. And again, she is comfortable now. You're comfortable now. And we're seeing the shape of this cheek now coming to uh, its desired appearance. I'll try and come from my lateral incision now. OK. 
in tempting up that tissue, allowing that cannula to fall into the desired plane, aspirating to see that we have no fluid and no blood, compression on the potential end artery that we would like to protect, and very nice improvement in that cheek. At this point, in the submalar zone here, I will actually use a direct needle technique. As we're far enough away from the tributaries in the mid face, that can give us trouble. And here, I prefer a depot technique, and it is right on the maxillary and Mainly bone. We now have a more youthful appearance of the cheek, a better contour, blending of the malar area, and depending on aesthetics, we could come further out. see now is the, the high point of the cheek and the uh, lower face are in more of a uh, smooth and uninterrupted curve. I still would like a small augmentation, a little bit right in this area here, and this I will do with needle, aspirate, inject, or looking just to bring this area up a tiny bit. toward that cheek. We can clearly augment this area somewhat more. Uh, the tear trough we have not addressed. This can be addressed with a, uh, a low G prime filler, uh, such as Volbella, but when the fat pads are prominent, I personally prefer a surgical excision of this area. Fermentation of the right cheek. Uh, clearly uh, a difference now between the left and the right. Aesthetically, I find this pleasing. More volume can be added if the individual feels that more uh, is desired. Uh, what I have simply done is restored that nice uh, cheek contour, uh, which wouldn't be obvious to anyone in terms of having anything done. Now I'd like to demonstrate a, a different technique that I use, uh, using more of a puncture um, depot technique. Uh, as opposed to cannulas. This has um, been safe in my hands. Understanding the anatomy is very critical. Uh, and so we're just going to go ahead and use a different technique uh, uh, to augment this cheek now. Again, understanding that we need to avoid the superficial malar area. Uh, as she has existing malar edema, there is both a superficial and deep lymphatic chain. Both need to be intact, and so although we could come into the prezygomatic space, the deep drainage is in the roof of that space, which would cause further compression and could potentially exacerbate her edema. So for me, I prefer to stay below that and contour the cheek. And so in this area here, we're going to be on the malar bone. And again, we always withdraw and anticipate where the arterial anatomy is. Serial puncture is, depending on the individual, more comfortable. The reason I say that is because the blunt cannula moves through the tissue and unless it's completely anesthetized, uh, will uh, cause
cause some discomfort. The approaching of the uh, orbital, infraorbital artery, we again will withdraw. And small volumes in a depot form. And once again, now we have a blended transition between this male and cheek, the nasal radial fold, and we still need a little volume in this area here. When I need volume in this area here, I do not use the depot technique, I do resort back to the cannula. On the left side, we see a very nice contour of the cheek with improvement even up into the tear trough area. We have a little bit of a deficiency along the orbital rim here. We're going to place a small volume in there at this point. And um, we'll come from lateral and we're going to stay under cheek skin. We will always aspirate and we will slowly inject as a depot technique. And again, open for me. Yeah. Softening in that tear trunk. With this degree of improvement, they could now justify a bulbella at the tear trough, uh, but we're going to stop at this point.